Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to cover a really simple method you can use to paint goblins. And there are so many ways you can do it. Uh, there's no one right way, so take my advice with a pinch of salt. But this was a lot of fun, and I think gives us a pretty good result we can put on the table and play some games with. Now if you're a DM who is, you know, painting the miniatures for your group, there's a good chance you're going to have to do a fair few of these. <laughs> so this scheme is purposefully pretty simple and uses a minimum of paints. Now I've chosen to use paints that are available in the Monster Paint Set from the Army Painter and the Adventurer Paint Set. Reason being, since they are the official, you know, they're tied in with Wizards of the Coast and the D&D line. So if you're getting started and you decide that you want to pick up, say, the Adventurer and the Monster Paint Set, along with a brush set, well, you can follow along with what I've done here. Now, the paints in the Monster Paint Set, they do have different names than the main Army Painter range, even if they're the same color. But me being wonderful, I'm going to include the names of the paints that I'm using and their converted names in the description. So if you need to find those, you can follow along with whatever box you're using. So without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now to begin with, I've primed this fella with a spray of leather brown. And you could use the uh, brush on primer if you wanted to. Honestly, a gray primer will work fairly well for this as well. But because I'm planning on portions of them being leather brown, this saves me a bit of time later on. So I've given them a quick pass, you know, gone over to make sure that I haven't missed any areas. And there is our goblin ready to... <laughs> I love this miniature so much. Anyhow, I've squeezed out onto my palette here just a little bit of goblin green, funnily enough. And we're going to paint this fella kind of like he's getting dressed. All right, so we're going to start from the lowest areas of the miniature, and then we'll paint each layer on top, which means we can be a little bit messy with our first couple of layers, and we're just tidying up as we go. Now I've got in my brush here just a tiny wee bit of water, and I'm going to mix that in with the goblin green on the palette there. This is just to help it uh, flow off the brush. Now you'll notice when we apply this, it's not going to cover perfectly in one go, and that's all right. What we want to do is go around all of the model. Uh, don't worry too much when we get near his uh, leather jerkin, if we get some green on that. Like I said, we're going to paint that another color later. But we'll apply one coat and give it about five minutes to dry. Then we'll come back and we'll give that a second coat over the top just to solidify that color. So around we go now. So this is what we have after one coat, and you'll see there's a little bit of that brown primer showing through underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that second coat I mentioned. So anytime I'm talking about two coats, this is what I mean. And then we've got a nice solid color. Now if you find that you're needing three, four, or more coats to get a solid color like that, just thin your paint with a little less water. Right? You'll see some folks saying that it should have a milky consistency, but I think for our purposes, you're going to be painting forever if you do it that way. So I've got here now some dungeon gray, and I've added a little bit of water, just enough to help it flow off the brush, same as before. And we're going to paint in his trousers with this. Again, not being terribly concerned if we hit his leather jerkin, or his boots. You'll see straight away that this does cover better than the green, um, and a lot of that is honestly just in how the pigments work. But that is a science lesson for another day. Let's just go ahead and paint his trousers in gray. Now, of course, there isn't a correct color for what his trousers should be. You can use anything you'd like from the set. Uh, red trousers, maybe, as part of his uniform. Who knows? It's really up to you. What I'm going to use now is a little bit of fur brown. And this is honestly one of my favorite colors from the Army Painter. It's this really nice reddish brown. Uh, and it works super well as a leather color once we put a wash over it, which you'll see later. But what I'm going to do is paint in his boots with this. And I'm also going to paint his belt around his waist. You'll notice, again, still not really fussed at all if I get some on the jerker. Now that will look quite bright, uh, almost cartoonish going on. But you've seen the finished product if you watch the start of the video, so trust me. <laughs> what I've got now, I'm going to use a little bit of Void Shield Blue. Uh, because I want to paint this tiny wee bottle on the back of his hip here. Um, you could use a white if you wanted to, but I'm just going to very carefully cross the bottle. 
Uh, we can paint the stopper a different color later, so I'm not too worried if I hit that with this blue. Now with that little splash of color done, let's flip them around. I have here some skeleton bone. And we're going to use this to paint the little fur trim on his helmet. Now if you're worried about hitting his face, you know, the areas that you've already painted, just paint up. Uh, because the metallic color that we're going to use later will cover very well over skeleton bone. So don't worry if you hit this stuff. Uh, just take your time when you come near, you know, ears and what have you that are sticking out. Remember, if you do make any mistakes, well, you can just cover them over. Not going to matter. Now, one thing you might notice with skeleton bone is that it actually covers remarkably well for such a light color. So if ever you're struggling to paint, say, white or even something like red, lay down a layer of skeleton bone first, and you'll find it much easier to paint over the top of that. What I've got now is some dirt spatter, and we're going to paint the wood on his helmet here. So taking care when I get close to his hands. And same as with his helmet, you know, this little top part of the helmet here, I can flop in there, and I don't care if I hit the metal. Now at last we can move on to some of the tidy up, and for this I'm going back to leather brown, which was our primer color. Now we want to tidy up his jerkin a little bit, so any areas that you've hit with, you know, the colors beneath, you can now tidy up. You'll find this covers really well, uh, you'll probably only need to do one quick coat of this to, uh, you know, get rid of those little blips and blops. Now we're starting to get somewhere. We're going to go ahead and apply the metallics to the miniature, and we're going to do this in two stages. First of all, I've got plate mail metal, and I'm going to use this for both areas. And what I'm going to do is apply this to the head of his halberd, of course, and we'll do the top of his helmet, this little dinged up bat. I feel so sorry for him, he's got such a rubbish helmet. <laughs> but once we've done this, you can swap on down to a character brush and start dotting in the studs on his armor. Now, is this necessary? No, not strictly. You know, these might have been painted or just whatever. You know, you don't have to worry too much about them, but it is going to look cool if you do do this. Uh, so you'll see I've already blotched uh, one of them, but again, I've still got my leather brown, so if I need to tidy up, I don't care. What's important is dotting all of the... Goodness me. This is probably the dull part. <laughs> now, that wasn't as time-consuming as I was worried about, and once I had actually gone and uh, tidied up with that leather brown, it didn't look too bad. What I'm going to do now, I have some corpse pale, and this I'm going to apply to his teeth and his eyes. We'll see why in a second here. So, let's first of all... It's easier to turn them sideways, I would say. We'll go in here and lightly blip, blip, blip along his teeth. Now, any mistakes you make, you can tidy up with a little bit of green, and I'm going to need to do that, unfortunately. And at the same time, let's dot in his eyes with this stuff. Now, before you reach for the goblin green to do your cleanup, I've chosen here demonic yellow, because most of the artwork I've seen tends to have goblins with yellow eyes. Uh, if you're painting for Age of Sigma or similar, you might want to do them red. Again, he's a goblin. You know, there's no correct answer to this. So because I've put down that corpse pale first, this yellow is going to cover super well. And now the last of our cleanup stages is going to be that goblin green. And let's just tidy up around his face. Now once you finish with your tidy up and all of those colors are thoroughly dry, I've popped out a little bit of strong tone onto my palette. Haven't mixed it out, uh, thinned it out any rather. And what I'm going to do is start applying this rather generously to the whole miniature. Now I really want to work it into any cracks or recesses. It'll flow there naturally, but it doesn't hurt to give it a helping hand. And anywhere that it pulls really heavily, like for example, if I just blop on his blade here. If it pulls like this, while it's still wet, just draw it around a little and sort of prevent it from glumping up like that. What I'm going to do is cover the whole miniature in this and then we'll pop them in the sun, give them about 30 minutes to dry and see what we end up with. 
Now once that shave dries, you're going to have a sort of glossy finish. Um, not to worry about that, because we are going to matte varnish him later. There's no reason that you couldn't varnish him now and put him on the table. You know, that is a finished miniature, why not? But I reckon we can take it a little further, and it's not going to take much to do. So what I'm going to do is actually go back to Goblin Green. Yes, again. <laughs> and we're going to apply this to most of the skin again, but we're going to avoid areas where that shade has settled in the very deepest recesses. So doing areas like his face is super easy because he's got so much detail there. Uh, but on his, let's get that in focus. On his arms, backs of his hands, you can spend a bit of time sort of deciding what style you want to approach with this, but for the most part, the shade will kind of give you a clue on what areas you want to re-green, as it were. And you'll see that very quickly improves the look of our goblin. What I'm going to do is, this is really the only time I'm going to do a three-stage on this. I've got here jungle green. And what I'm going to pick out with this is just extreme edges. So tip of his nose, let's get that out of the way. Tips of his ears, backs of his knuckles. And this will look absolutely lurid on your brush. But it's actually fairly subtle on the miniature itself. So I'm going to go around and I am going to brighten up his skin a little bit in a few areas. And we'll get a look at what that looks like when that's finished. Now I found that jungle green dries with a slight translucency, so you will need to go over some areas a couple of times, like the backs of his knuckles there. It's fairly subtle on camera, but I promise it is a little more, it's a little easier to see in reality. What I'm going to do on his trousers is rather than going back and painting the base color again, we're going to go straight to the highlight, because I don't think we need, you know, that extra time on every part of the miniature. But what I'm going to do is with just a little bit of castle gray, just paint along the edges of raised folds, and you'll find in some areas it might be a little tricky to get to these, but if you do struggle to paint them, you're probably not going to see them, so don't worry too much. Now with those couple of highlights done, that's pretty much everything I'm going to do. You could go ahead and highlight his boots, maybe with a tanned flesh that can work quite well over fur brown. But, you know, for a minion that we're just going to throw in front of our, uh, our players, I don't think you need to spend forever on making them look great. But that shine is still putting me off a little, right? So what I'm going to do is actually go outside and hit him with a spray varnish, a matte varnish, to take that away. And that'll really seal him down, make him look a lot more reasonable. Or a goblin, anyway. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hit him with that now. Now, doesn't that matte varnish just make the world of difference? As easy as that, quick spray, and he is sorted. You could go along and highlight the metal, for example, if you wanted that to be a little bit shinier, but I think for our bulk standard minions that we're going to put on the table, this will be fine. So what I'm going to do now is to go ahead and pop a quick base on him. Now, basing is a whole subject of its own, but I'll pop the recipe in the description and just very quickly show you how that looks. So let's skip ahead. And there we have it, our goblin is complete. Now I like to use the base as a spot where you can add a little bit of color to the miniature without painting an extra color. So it allows us to use quite a narrow sort of palette and then a little bit of red just makes them stand out that bit much more. It's up to you, of course, how you like to base your things. Um, you know, particularly if you are using them, a lot of folks using these on battle maps, uh, playing D&D, tend to just paint the bases black, but however you do it, Blacking it out or finishing off with a little bit of you know, grass and what have you, I think it really sets off the miniature. So as you can see, this is relatively simple to do. You know, it doesn't use a great many colors, and there's plenty of places where you could change it up if you wanted a different result. I've really enjoyed painting them. Total painting time was probably about 30 to 40 minutes. You know, not counting drying time. That will take a little bit extra. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paint and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, and Fred. Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free. Drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.